Hey everyone, it's Anna here and in this lecture we're going to have a look at forms. So we're going to have a look at what forms are and how we can write them in HTML and then how we can actually do something with the data that the user inputs in JavaScript. So basically a form is a type of element on a HTML page or a web page which allows a user to enter in data. Um, so some examples of where you might use this is a survey, a login or sign up form, or something like a job application form. The data that the user enters in can be in different formats like text, numbers, date figures, and checkboxes or radio buttons. And then the client or the server is able to receive this information, which the users entered into the form, and do something with it. So in this lecture, we're going to look at actually making forms in HTML and then reading the data client side in JavaScript. All right, let's dive in. So let's start with how to make a form in HTML. And the basis of making a form in HTML is the form element. So this element is a way of defining a form. And inside this tag, we put the contents of the form, which is usually things like labels. So here you can see we've got first name label and last name label and different types of input elements. So in this example, we have a form tag and it has first name and last name input elements. Notice that we've specified the type equals text attribute. So we can use the type attribute of an input tag to specify the type of that input. So some valid attribute values of this attribute are button, radio, checkbox, um, or email, or anything like that. There's plenty of others. So we've taken a look at how to write the HTML for a form. Now we want to be able to read those forms in JavaScript. So firstly, um, on your web page, you might have one form or you might have multiple forms in your document and we want a way of accessing these forms in JavaScript. So the document object in JavaScript has a property called forms, which is where you can find all of the forms in your document. That's how you can access them. So document.forms is something called a named collection, which means we can index it like an array and we can find a form using the name of the form. So looking at the sample code, I can do document.forms.test to access the form with the name test. And I can also do the same thing by indexing in the list with a string of the name of the form. So document.forms, square brackets, and the string test also works to get the form with name test. So just quickly jumping back two slides, here in my example form, I provided the form name user form. I'd be able to access this form in JavaScript using forms dot, uh, document dot forms dot user form. Um, cool. So lastly, I can also just use an index. So looking at this last example, I've got document dot forms zero, which gets the first form in the document. And the format of document dot forms of what we get from this is a HTML collection, so kind of like an array of HTML form elements, objects of the HTML form element dot type. All right, so we just saw how to access the HTML form element. Once we have the form, we also want to know how to get the actual input elements in the form. So form elements have a field called elements. And form.elements is also a named collection of all the input elements in that form. So being a named collection, it means just like in our last example, we can access elements by both index and by name. Here I have some sample code for a HTML form. So you can see it has an input um, for first name or F name, which is a text input. And then it has two radio input buttons, which both have the same name age, but they have two different values. Then over on the right hand side, we have some JavaScript. Uh, so in this JavaScript, first we retrieve the form element via document.forms, and then just getting the zeroth form, which is the first and only form on the document. Now I want to retrieve what the user has typed in for first name or F name. So to do this, I do form.elements.f name. Um, and doing form.elements0, getting the zeroth element would also be valid. And 
We actually have a nice shorthand notation for this where you can do form.fname directly. You don't need to always type dot elements. So it's just a shorthand. So that's how you access the value of an element in a form. For something like a radio button, um, so you can see with those radio buttons, we have two radio buttons with the same name. So doing form.elements.age is going to return a collection for us. Cool. So that's how you can read values from a form. One cool feature of form elements is back referencing. So when you have a DOM element uh, for one of the input elements in a form, this element actually has a form attribute which stores a back reference to the form which it's contained in. So you can see in this diagram that we have a form and the form has all its children elements, the elements that are in it, and then each element also references the form that it's contained in. Here I just have a little quick example of back referencing. So on the left hand side I've got some HTML with a form and it has one input tag. If I do document.forms0, I get this form. And then I can do dot login to get the login element from that form. Then on that form element, like the specific element in the form, I can do dot form to get the contained form. So this line console.log of login.form will give us our variable form. All right, so the last piece of the puzzle once we get access to an element inside a form, we want to be able to read its value, what someone's actually typed into the field. So there's a few ways of doing this. Um, you can see in the first line of code for a text input, you can just do input.value and that will give you a string of what was entered. For something like a checkbox or a radio button, you can do input.checked, which gives us a boolean of whether that checkbox is ticked or not. And then a slightly more complex one is a select tag. So um, a select tag is something like a dropdown. Um, so you can do select.options, which gives you a collection of all the options in that select. You can do select.value, which gives you the currently selected option. And you can do selected index, which is an index of the selected value into the array of all options. So now we've learned how to read what a user has inputted into a form. Now let's take a look at how we know when a user has submitted a form. So like how we know when we should run the code when the user has clicked submit. So when you make a form, you should add a special type of button called the submit button. And when that's clicked, it fires a submit event. So we're able to listen for a submit event in JavaScript so once the form is submitted, we can run a callback. So you should listen to the events lecture to have a better idea of how to add event listeners. But here I'm just adding an event listener to the form for the submit event. And inside there, I'm able to run a callback. So I can run some form validation. I can do something with the data in this callback. So now let's take a look at some live coding examples of how to use forms. All right, so now we're going to put together everything we've learned and we're going to make an example form and then write some JavaScript to do something with the data in that form. And the form example which we're going to do is a create account form. So we want to um, have a form, say someone's signing up for a website or something and needs to put in their personal information. So let's start by making the actual form tag itself. So um, I'm going to put a form tag and I'm going to give it a name. Um, now I'm going to start putting in some input fields. So I want one for the username um, and like maybe the date of birth. I'm also using the placeholder attribute here, which is the text which goes on the input field um, before anyone types something in it. So I put in a name field, a username. Now I'm going to put in a date of birth field. So I've used the type equals date attribute, which will make it a date dropdown pickup field. Um, and now I want to do a password field. 
So you can actually do type equals password. Um, and what this does, it'll put the, it'll, it'll basically block out the word like on any other password entry. I think it will use dots instead of characters. Um, I'm going to put a placeholder, please enter your password. I'm just going to do another one for confirm your password. Um, now I'm going to do an example of a select tag, um, so like a drop down. I'm going to do this so that the user can select which state they live in. I'm going to do a select tag. I'm going to put name equals state. And then inside the select tag, I'm going to put a bunch of option tags, which is all the options in the select tag. Um, so this is the value of it um, in the JavaScript, and this is the name which is going to appear on the actual tag. Um, cool. Um, finally, I'm going to put a file input so that someone can upload a photo of themselves. So that's just input type equals file. Um, the last piece of this is to put a submit button so that um, we can actually run, like, add an, a submit listener in the JavaScript for when they submit the form. So this is just another input, type submit, which will look just like a button. And the value is what it says on the button. All right, so now let's just quickly run this code to see how it looks um, in the browser. Cool, so you can see here I've got um, normal text fields, a date picker where I can choose a date, um, password fields, so when I type in these, it shows up as stops instead of letters. I've got my select drop down where I can choose a state and my submit button. So now what I wanna do is I wanna write some code in the JavaScript such that when I hit the submit button, we will just show an alert. We're not gonna actually try and access the data, we just want to add that listener for when we hit the submit button. So first thing I'm going to do in my JavaScript is I'm going to try and access my form element. So I named my form element create account. So I'm just going to do let sign up form equals document.forms.create account. And now what I'm going to do, just like this on the side, I'm going to add an event listener for the submit event. And I'm going to make a callback, which takes in the event. Now in here, I'm just going to do an alert, which says form submitted. So I refresh this page, when I click submit, I'm getting an alert box saying form submitted. Now you'll notice that when I submit, um, what it does is it creates a request which puts all these um, values which I entered into the URL. Now if we don't want this to happen, we can just prevent the default behavior of the event. So let's open up the code again and I can do event.preventDefault. Just remove that. Oops. And that, oh, once again. <laughs> right, so now when I submit, oh, I removed my alert. All right, so now when I submit, I'm no longer getting the URL params. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to get the values that the user has typed into the form, and we want to actually alert these. So first, I'm going to get the username form. What did I call the username? I called it name. So I'm going to do sign up form dot elements dot name, and I'm going to do dot value to get the actual string value from the element. Cool. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the date that they entered. So very similar. Um, 
I want to get the password one and password two. Um, and now I want to get the file which they entered. So, oh, and I want to get the state as well. So first I'll get the file, which is called photo. Um, and then finally, I want to get the state. Cool, so now I've gotten all the values, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to alert these in the stream. I run this again, fill in some values. Cool, so you can see um, it's console logged my name, my date of birth, my password both times, the name of the file and my state. So the last thing we're gonna add is a bit of form verification. So we wanna make sure that if the user doesn't fill in all the fields, that we prompt them to actually fill these in. So I'm just gonna check the values that are entered um, and see if they've been defined. So here I'm just going to alert that please enter all the fields. Cool, let's try this again. So if I just type in Anna, but I don't fill in the rest. Cool, so now I'm getting an alert saying please enter all fields. Um, now let's also check to make sure that the passwords match. So I'm going to add another or statement. Let's try that again. So I'll fill in all the fields. Um, make sure to choose this, but I'll type in a different password for each. And click submit. Okay, cool. So I'm getting an alert that says passwords don't match. So that's the basics of making a form and adding in some really basic form validation in JavaScript. So that's the end of this lecture. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you learned something.